the Premiership's most philanthropic owner prepares himself for another examination of his investment portfolio. Jack Walker's eight-year tenure has seen so many millions of pounds lavished on team and stadium, yet this Lancashire town faces eight more days of anxiety. Manchester United visit on Wednesday, a trip to Newcastle awaits them next weekend, so this, for Blackburn, is a game they simply have to win. No club has been hit harder by injuries. Today's team lacks eight first-choice players. The leading scorer, Ashley Ward, has succumbed to a back problem, and Jason McAteer hurt his knee in training during the week. So although Rovers have wit through Gillespie and Duff, they don't have a great deal of height up front. Matt Janssen returns after a knee operation to partner Kevin Gallagher. Forrest, relegated a fortnight ago, stick with the players who earned a rare victory over Sheffield Wednesday last week. 37-year-old Richard Goff has been their outstanding player lately. Hugo Porfirio had a trial here five years ago, but left saying he disliked Blackburn's style of play. And between the posts, Mark Crossley, scorer of an own goal on this ground in the past, and who conceded seven here three years ago. It's not his favourite venue. Locals here don't subscribe to the notion that Blackburn are too good or too wealthy to go down. Local supporters will tell you that the last Rovers team relegated from the top flight in 1966 included the likes of Brian Douglas, Ronnie Clayton and Mike England. This team is the product of a portion of a steel magnet's fortune. Blackburn in their blue and white halves playing in this first half from left to right. Right to kick off. Walker made an appearance on the pitch to plead for the most passionate possible support. The club have also taken out adverts in the local evening paper to plead for just the same. The header is by Chettle for Forrest, and here's Kevin Gallagher. And to play it goes for a throw. It's a difficult time of the season for referees with so much riding on games like this. Graham Paul has control today. He was a late replacement for the injured Neil Barry. Harewood. Useful pass to Rogers and Friedman's completely unmarked in the centre. And it was Darren Peacock that cleared it up and beyond his own crossbar. Friedman was just waiting for the square ball. But as he waited, Peacock crucially intervened. Soak up a degree of pressure in this opening quarter of an hour. Taken by Bart Williams. Goalkeeper and defender Davidson went for the same ball. Bonalair. Rogers. So the Rovers defenders have the sun in their faces. Porfirio and Friedman! Doogie Friedman for Nottingham Forest with a hammer blow to the very heart of Blackburn Rovers. They've only won five matches all season. They're already doomed. But what effect will that have on the survival hopes of Blackburn Rovers? The threat had been there moments before when Rogers Cross almost found Friedman. This time for videos did. And what a calm finish. Excellent play by the Portuguese, and then head down and over the ball, driven into the corner. Janssen, good movement, particularly from this man, Duff. Cross these fingertips, push it away for a corner. A ground where so often in the past he suffered. Jobby six foot plus in height. Taken by Wilcox. Goff. And Goff a second time to Porfirio. Which way is he playing? Crossley uncomfortable with the clearance on his right foot.
Interception by Carlton Palmer. Bart Williams. Friedman. Edwards touch. Friedman in pursuit. Oh, and the back pass was left short by Stefan Olsho. Friedman was so nearly in again. They look so ponderous at the back, Blackburn. They look like a side under serious threat. Harewood and Chettle waiting for Mark Williams' kick. And it was Richard Goff who got his head to the ball. The goalkeeper came a long way out beyond the edge of his own six-yard box didn't succeed in making any form of contact whatsoever. waiting in the penalty area, so is Duff and Wilcox now as well. Gillespie. Such an elusive runner when he puts his mind to it. Gallagher! That is brilliant! And it's just what Blackburn ordered. In dire need of some form of inspiration. Gallagher has provided it. He's not always been a great goal scorer, but he has always been a scorer of great goals. Lovely touch and appreciation. Crossley stranded. Much more to bang on about now. The plea for vibrancy and noise around Ewood Park is being answered by the locals. Janssen. Duff. Robbed by Palmer. Friedman wants it played forward, but he's being held by Peacock. Porfirio. Louis Jean arriving on his outside. Here's Friedman. That's well struck, and that's a fine save by a goalkeeper who's been in very good form for most of this season, John Phelan. He was heading for the top corner. Phelan received one of the club's Player of the Year trophies prior to this game. Now has to defend this corner, and he lost his bearings. Wilcox hemmed in by Goff. of them have been repelled by John Phelan. It's an achievement just to get it on target and with such power. Rogers. Goff. Worrying for Blackburn that Goff should be afforded such an opportunity. Maybe this will be the day when he finally scores a goal in English football after a 12-year gap. survival hopes have received an enormous boost quite what Chettle was thinking of only he knows 
And the next question is, where was the tackle? Well, it started outside and continued inside, but what matters as Chettle departs early is that the referee has deemed it to be a penalty. Now, Mark Crossley is the specialist at saving them. He's repelled three this season. It's Kevin Gallagher, and Crossley's done it again! Gallagher might score on the rebound, but what a save by Mark Crossley to tip that onto the post. There are straightforward penalty saves, and there are terrific penalty saves, and that was in the latter category. There are arguments inside the penalty area, but Crossley got down so quickly. The only man to save from the spot from Matthew Letizia keeps out Gallagher, but there's the header by Carsley, off the line. And then Harewood behind, it was Mathieu Louis-Jean stationed on the post that kept out the flying header from Lee Carsley. What a finish to this first half. Defender on the line did his job. There's Wilcox, up in the air. And Barber pretends to get it clear. And the half-time whistle nearly gives a chance for everybody to draw breath. A goal to each side. Friedman for Forrest, Gallagher for Blackburn. A sending off that of Steve Chettle. A penalty that was a marginal decision right on the edge of the box, which was dispatched by Gallagher goalwards and tipped onto the post brilliantly by Mark Crossley. Graham Fall has earned his half-time orange and cup of tea. And at the midway points of this vital fixture at Ewood Park, it's Blackburn 1, Nottingham Forest 1. So from Blackburn's viewpoint, at least, everything now depends on their ability to find a way past the ten remaining Forest players. And on a ground where he's had such ill fortune down the years, Forrest will be looking for more inspiration from Mark Crossley to follow on from that penalty save. Goff. Crossley's never the happiest with back passes. And there he was distinctly unhappy. Wilcox to Duff. Now Davidson. These left-sided players combining down the left for Blackburn. Cross headed away. Only as far as Croft, this is serious Blackburn pressure now being exerted. The final ball is sadly lacking. And Goff's pass out of defence could set Friedman away. But he's a particularly lonely figure. Blackburn now have men back in numbers. Friedman. Porfirio. Bart Williams. Oh! Bart Williams has scored! An air of stunned silence around Ewood Park now. Bylan beaten to his left by a player who generally scores once a season. And to show how unfortunate Blackburn are, that's his second of this campaign. The ten men take the lead. With a shot from distance, a bolt from the blue. No one got to him quickly enough, and the shot was perfectly placed into the bottom corner. Are those storm clouds gathering over Ewood Park? Ryan Kidd contemplating changes. The one thing he has to change is the scoreline. Wilcox wrapped into the shins of Palmer. And Blackburn are playing a dangerous game here with only one man back and the pace of Harewood to contend with. Others are arriving in support, but Harewood's got away from Onshaw, who was pulling his shirt. And that's a point that Harewood is making to the referee. 
Pat is short, just there. And had the referee had that view, there would have been a case for a penalty. Hidden out by Davidson to Rogers, who prefers it on his left, that hit Peacock. It's another corner. of the forest. At least at the moment. Rogers. Davis. Gallagher has had to put himself into reverse on the far side to get himself back on side. But all to no avail. After 28 years, Ron Atkinson's penultimate league match in professional football. What a game it's turning out to be. Mark Williams. This with a winning goal. By Peacock. Will Cox, Louis Jean stretched and didn't get there. And here's the man over for Blackburn, Davis. Gallagher's available in the middle. There's Kevin Gallagher. Well, the referee has given a corner which indicates that Crossley managed to get a hand to the ball. Would probably have actually hit the bar had Crossley not got to it. Gillespie. Goff towering above Peacock. Friedman. That was out of play. Anxiety clear amongst Blackburn players to get the ball back as quickly as possible. Forrest is trying to concentrate. Here's Davidson. Oh, we might find a way through. Here's Peacock. Crossley saved it again. Well, he's making up for all those horrendous experiences that he's had down the years at Ewood Park. Conceding seven, scoring an own goal. We've had the penalty save and sundry other terrific stops like that one. Carsley. Some of the Forest players are almost out on their feet. But there's a break on here with Harewood. And there's a man in the middle if Harewood had seen him. But he was held up illegally by Ancho. Peripheral vision was not the best because Thierry Bonolaire had made a run alongside him, but he was halted by Oncho. Obstructed. And hence the indirect nature of the free kick. Alou. Still Bernard Alou deflected! And within a whisker of the post. That's how close Blackburn were to total elimination from this game. <laughs>